Welcome to the Explore, Prepare, Succeed Thriving Academically presentation for summer orientation. Our learning outcomes for today are to talk a little bit about connection and engagement on campus, academics and some policies related to these, and then your independence in defining your role as a student during your time at UNCW. When we talk about connection and engagement, we're talking about both your involvement on campus, your engagement with the community, and how to find your people. And that extends both in your classroom, in your academics, but beyond that into your extracurricular activities and things like that. So when we're thinking about engaging and connecting within your class, there's simple things you can do. Things like asking questions. So making sure that you're attending class, you're active participants in the discussions. If you have a question, make sure you're raising your hand, ask it. Chances are, if you have a question, somebody else does too. They just may not be brave enough to raise their hand. So please ask any questions you have, engage in discussion with your class, all of your classes. You are going to get out of it what you put into it. That means making sure that you are studying for your courses. You are doing all of your reading assignments. You are making sure that you are reviewing your notes before class, before, after class. Go to office hours if you do have questions and you're not feeling like you want to ask them in the bigger setting. Instructors love office hours. It's a hidden secret on campus. They love them. Instructors have to be there and they would much rather be sitting there talking with you um, than answering emails or doing some of their report writing. They would much rather sit and discuss things with students. I actually had a stats professor one time that said, you don't even have to come with a formulated question. If you're confused, just come. Bring your notes, bring your textbook, whatever it is, and just point to the very last thing that made sense. And we will go from there. I can help you figure out where things went a little hazy, where you got confused, maybe explain it in a different way. But you have to go to class and ask those questions. If you're not asking questions, we all just assume that you got it and you're good. Um, so make sure that you are engaging in that way. And then one more thing is to make sure that you are reading your UNCW email. Legally, that is our way we must communicate with you. Um, so get in the habit now of making sure you're checking it daily, set up a filing system or some sort of organizational structure for yourself so that you don't miss anything. You don't want to end up missing an important assignment from your instructor um, or an important deadline just because it got buried in your email. So outside of class, we also want to talk about extracurriculars, things that you can get involved with. Um, you've probably heard some of this throughout the rest of your orientations, but things like Campus Activities Involvement, which we refer to as CAKE, you'll hear that a lot. They are awesome at getting students engaged. They put on a lot of cool events, things like Fall into the Dub, the Involvement Carnival that will happen in the first week, but also utilize resources like Wavelink or Cork to look at different student groups and organizations. Find something based on your own interest. Um, it's super easy to kind of make friends that way when you already have some sort of commonality picked out because of the student group you're in. Um, and then also keep in mind that things like your resident advisors, peer mentors, these are also people that are going to be here to support you in your transition. Um, they are students that have been there. They're upper level students, sophomores through seniors. So they've been in your shoes before. If you're just sitting around trying to find somebody to go to dinner with, text them. I guarantee you they'll pick up the phone, send out a group meet, and you'll have a big group ready to go to dinner. Um, so just reach out. This is definitely going to be a transition for you guys. Um, moving from high school to college, it's different. Um, you know, there's a bit of a culture shock going on. For me, the biggest change was laundry. I had done laundry my entire life, always, since I was like seven. But, you know, I did it in a house where there were only four other people in it. If I put my stuff in the wash maybe wasn't around when it was time to move it to the dryer. My mom very lovingly moved it for me. That didn't happen in college. In college, it was like survival of the fittest to get my laundry done. If you weren't there the minute the washer was done, your clothes were on the floor and you had to start all over again. So I actually had to plan time for laundry, whereas before it had just been something I had done in between other things. Um, that was a big change for me. Other things might be, you know, figuring out who you are going to go to dinner with or how you're going to fit you know, different student groups into your day. Um, your schedule is going to be different, whereas from high school, it was pretty set schedule every day. 
the classes you went to might have changed, but the time you were in school was pretty set. That's going to be up to you and how you plan your schedule now. So it is going to be about kind of achieving that balance between academics and the social side of school. Um, it's also about managing relationships because you guys are still going to have those connections from back home, whether it be family or old friends, and then you're going to be creating new relationships while you're here. How do you balance managing both of those and remaining engaged while you're here? So just give yourself some grace, think through some of these things that might be a challenge to you now. And then what are some things that you can do to kind of, you know, preemptively plan for them rather than react to them later on? Now we're gonna talk a bit about your academics. So we're gonna discuss a little bit about kind of what a liberal arts degree is, how that fits into your university studies and your first two years at UNCW, as well as different policies that you need to know right now. We're not gonna go every, over every little detail, but the things that are most important to you now. So UNCW is a liberal arts school, um, which means that our university studies is a liberal arts curriculum. What this means is that we are going to expose you to a variety of different disciplines. You're going to get a vast breadth of knowledge from a lot of different areas of learning versus a depth of knowledge. That depth is going to come from your major where you do take, you know, 10, 12 courses in the same department, but your university studies in this liberal arts curriculum is going to be focused on that breadth of knowledge. Um, and the idea is to really promote, you know, growth within yourself looking at a lot of those soft skills that employers are looking for. If you look at the colorful wheel, you'll see things listed like inquiry, critical thinking, information literacy, global citizenship. These are things that our employers are looking for out of their hirees, but they're really hard to measure. It's not a specific course that you take. It is the soft skills that you're going to learn from a lot of the different areas. Um, so I challenge you to think through what are some of the soft skills you can learn through each department because even if you're not super excited about, you know, a certain discipline, everyone can have something to gain. Um, so for example, I was a psychology major. I was not a big fan of art history. It's just not really my thing, if I'm being honest. Um, but what I learned in my art history class when I had to compare and contrast two paintings in grave detail was that detail orientation skill, which I use every single day in my job now. If I wasn't detail oriented working with students and making sure you were on track to graduate, you guys would not be real happy. You wouldn't be graduating on time. So that is something, a skill set that I learned from one of my university studies liberal arts courses that maybe didn't directly tie into my psychology degree, but it did provide me with skills that I use every day now. So think through what some of those things may be, especially if it's in an area outside of your main major interest. Your university studies are going to be things that you complete throughout your four years here. So we're going to scaffold them throughout your four years. Um, there is kind of this saying that's been going around for years. I heard it when I was in school that you have to finish your university studies within the first two years. That's a lie. You have four years to complete it. And in fact, we do want you to spread it out throughout your four years. Now, that being said, your first two years may be a bit more heavy in the university studies around these foundations and approaches and perspectives. And your second two years are, will be a little heavier in the major, but there will be components of both major and university studies every single semester. But for the first kind of couple semesters, we are gonna focus on these first two steps of the foundations, approaches, and perspectives. How this fits into the big broad picture on how to graduate, is that you need 120 credit hours to graduate. That is gonna be composed of your university studies, which is around 48 credit hours and a major. Now you may be sitting here going, okay, 48 hours of university studies, but my major is a high credit hour major. It's got 92 hours in it. That's more than 120. You'd be right. But keep in mind that some of these things will overlap. So you will have some major requirements that also meet university studies requirements. And a lot of those higher course majors, major courses really do that. Um, so for example, like a marine bio major is going to be mo both of their science requirements through both bio 201 and chem 101, but they're also gonna meet their mathematics requirement through their calculus course they need to take. Those are gonna be three courses that definitely overlap between university studies and major requirements. On the flip side of that, your 48 hours of university studies 
plus a major that maybe is lower in credit hours, around 36 hours, that does not equal 120. So how do you get there? You get there by potentially picking up a minor or just looking at different elective courses, things that you're excited to take. Those are going to vary from student to student on how many you guys need. And it is essentially how many do you need to reach 120 once we've looked at your university studies and your major. But in order to graduate, you need 120 credit hours, university studies complete, and your major requirements complete. All right. The first is this add drop period. So you actually have until August 31st to make changes to your schedule. That means you can add drop any time between kind of the first day of class and the fifth day of class, which is August 31st. So if you go into a class and you're feeling way in over your head, think it's too advanced for you, you can swap it out. If it's just a class, you just are like, this is not what I thought it was. I'm not super excited to take this anymore. I'd rather take a different university studies flip it. You've got time. So that first week is really for you to kind of test out your class, make sure your schedule works for you, and then change anything that's not going to work for you. After that, so between, or well, after August 31st and before October 25th, you could withdraw from a class. If you withdraw before that October 25th deadline, you'll have to get into the transcript. It does not impact your GPA. It just shows you were in the class and you withdrew, but it does not count towards your GPA. And you are limited to 16 credit hours throughout your time at UNCW. That is roughly five free credit hour courses. Um, but we go by credit hours there. So you get 16 hours of W. So after October 31st until October 25th, you can drop with a W. After October 25th, it is known as a WF, which is treated as the F in the GPA. So you really want to go ahead and mark October 25th on your calendar. Hopefully you don't need to drop a class, but if you do, we would rather see a W on your transcript than a D or an F. And employers and grad schools are very, very used to seeing them on transcripts. This is a very similar policy to many other institutions. So if you have any concerns at all, please talk with your advisor because maybe you just need to be connected to different resources on campus. Or maybe you do need to drop the course and we can help you decide what your best op option is. In order to remain academically eligible after the fall semester, you ha must have a 2.0 GPA. That is roughly a C average. So if you have a class that dips below a C, you'll need another one that's higher than a C to kind of keep you above that 2.0. Again, we hope you aim higher, but bare minimum to remain in good standing is a 2.0. Okay, so we're going to talk pretty quickly about just independence. What does that mean? What's the relationships shifts you're going to experience while you're here? And how does that play into academic advising? So right now, you guys kind of have this relationship going on, child to parent. Chances are you've been living at home. Parents make the rules. You try your best to follow them. That's kind of how it's gone. You look to them to kind of lead. This is what it looks like in college. It's a mess. You guys are trying to transition to be your own independent adult, but you still have your parents and you're still their child. It's going to be very, very confusing, especially around times when you go back home, because you might be getting that in, gaining that independence here. Um, but I know for me, like when I went back for fall break, it was a shock when all of a sudden I had a curfew again. I hadn't had a curfew in, in two months. And all of a sudden, nope, I'm back at home under my parents' roof. I had to be home at a certain time of the night. I had to let everybody know where I was going and when. That was a shift. It was a change. But our goal is that throughout college, we're going to move more into this sort of relationship of adult to an adult. And that's how we're going to treat you from day one. So we as advisors are going to treat you as that independent adult. And this is kind of what we're looking for. It's a partnership. All we really ask of you guys is that you really talk with us. You communicate with us. Be honest. We have heard it all at this point. Um, don't tell us that you're doing super awesome in a class if you are struggling, because we can't help get you connected to resources. We can't help you figure out what your best path is if we don't know what's going on. Um, you are responsible for your own academics, though. So not only does that mean you know studying and taking the test yourself, but it's also being knowledgeable about your academic policies. What are your major requirements? It's your job to keep in, in touch with these dates. 
we'll send reminders and we'll help educate you, but it's really ultimately your responsibility to make sure if you plan to drop a class that you actually do. Um, and then us as your advisor, we're going to be there. We're there to give you advice. We're going to help coach you through some things. Uh, we will help educate you around things. You know, we're not going to just throw everything at you and say, here you go. Here's your policy. Figure it out. We will explain it. Um, and we're going to help you kind of kind of educate you around your university studies and your major requirements. Um, but the choice of what you take is really up to you. So again, it's that partnership is what we're really looking for. Your advisor is going to be assigned the first week of class. You will be able to see who your advisor is through your Starfish Student Success Network. Um, within that network, you will find other people across campus that can really help you be successful. You'll see things like um, a university librarian, your residential coordinator will be in there. All of your instructors will be in there. Um, so it's really people that can help can help you be successful and are invested in your success. And as an advisor, you are gonna meet with your advisor twice in your first semester. So you'll meet with us within the first three weeks to kind of do a meet and greet appointment, figure out, you know, what are your goals? How can we get you connected? Um, and then your second meeting will be around registration for the spring semester. Preparing for your fall registration though, there are a couple of things you can do. So the first is that you can review your advising modules specifically the things around your university studies requirements and your major requirements, and also familiarize yourself with CNET. Make sure that you know how to log in, you know how to do the duo authentication, um, and that you know how to kind of navigate searching for courses. And then plan to take the math placement test when you get here on campus. Almost every student is going to need some sort of a math, and the math, well not almost, every student will need some sort of a math unless you're coming in with math credit. Um, but many majors have a very specific math requirement. And if you don't take that placement exam, it could actually put you behind um, if you don't, if you're not able to take the course required for your major. So do yourself a favor, plan to take the placement when you get to campus. Once you register, we get a lot of questions around what is a normal schedule. A normal schedule is a schedule that's balanced. So we're looking for around 15 to 16 credit hours. We get that number because if you take the 120 required for graduation, divide it by eight semesters, you get 15 hours a semester. So we're looking for 15 credit hours and then a balance between university studies courses and major courses. Every first year student is required to take Uni 101 in their first semester, unless they're an honors student and then you will take honors 110. But every student will take one of their seminar courses, Uni 101 or Honors 110 in the first semester. Outside of that, we're looking to balance those other four classes with other university studies. So things that could be a math and English, but it could also be, you know, social sciences, some of your fine arts, um, and then your major or major exploration courses. So the goal would be kind of two major or major exploration, two university studies, and then Uni 101 or Honors 110. All right, that should get you guys started, and we hope to see you on campus soon. Thanks.